Hey, what's up everybody? Justin Seeley here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel and happy Monday. I know, not the greatest day, but in any case, thank you for making me a part of your day. If you're new here, consider subscribing, clicking that like button and turning on notifications so you get a little ding each and every time I post a new video. I talk a lot about Photoshop, Illustrator, and all things creative, and eventually some other stuff too, but that's for a different video. So what are we talking about today? Well, we're gonna be diving into Photoshop and we're going to be talking about how to make our composites, that's images that are composed of multiple images, we're going to be talking about how to make those things look more realistic, because if you take a look at what we're starting with here, this is not a bad composition, but you know, the guy who's kind of given the street performance or whatever he's doing here, like he's, he doesn't look like he fits. He looks like I cut him out of the newspaper and stuck him into this scene. So we're going to be working with the latest version of Photoshop. That's also a very important caveat here. This only works in newer versions of Photoshop, unfortunately. Um, but we are going to be using something called neural filters in Photoshop to make this guy look as though he fits a little bit better inside this scene. And we're also going to customize the scene so that we attract people's eyes all the way to the subject right at the front. So first and foremost, let's work on the background layer. You see here, this is a, a photograph that was meant to show the entirety of the landscape, right? All the way back to the back there where you can see those people way back in the back at the little restaurant. Everything's in focus. Well, if we were taking a photo of someone in the foreground, chances are some or at least maybe a little bit of the background would be blurred out because of the focal distance and the depth of field of the camera. So let's recreate that using some of the new neural filters in Photoshop. Wow, new neural filters in Photoshop. That's really tough to say. <laughs> I should use, use that as a warm-up exercise when I'm, when I'm uh, getting ready for these things. But in any case, let's start by going to the filter menu and choosing neural filters. Once I'm inside of the neural filters dialog box, you're gonna see a list of the filters over on the right hand side of the screen. And you may actually see a download button next to some of them. If you do and you wanna download those and play around with them, absolutely, feel free. Go ahead, click that button, install them, go for it. These filters, and you'll see some of them are actually marked in beta, they're all new and they're all based on cloud computing and they do some sort of, you know, uh, Adobe magic or whatever they call it nowadays. And, um, they they do these amazing things and all you have to do is turn them on so the first thing we're going to do is turn on depth blur and when i turn on depth blur it's going to analyze the photo and then you're going to see boom there we go it starts to blur out parts of the background now i can adjust things like the focal distance so if i push the focal distance up to like 70 you can see that more stuff comes into focus like you can see that guy now here in the in the doorway but if i want a more shallow depth of field i can pull that back to something like 40 and that's going to kind of blur him out a little bit really blurs out the background but leaves in focus some of these things in the foreground and the street where our subject is going to be standing so that's totally fine i can also adjust the blur strength if i want so if i want to really blur things out i can crank that up to something like 70 and you'll notice that it gets really blurry in the background in this case though i think i'm going to back that down to about 45 that's going to be a little bit more realistic and easier to deal with i think and then finally at the bottom here i'm going to choose new layer and hit ok that's going to create a new layer on top of this and you can see here's before and after so we've just added that nice depth of field to the photo leading people's eyes forward because they're not going to know what's going on in the background it's blurry so let's follow forward oh okay it's this guy that's the subject that we want everybody to look at but still this guy looks like he's got a bright spotlight on him he doesn't fit inside of the composition at all so how do we fix that well lucky for us there's more adobe magic in terms of how to bring him in harmony with the background harmony let's go to filter neural filters and inside of neural filters you're going to look for something called harmonization it's under the beta section and you see there when i hover over it it says harmonize the color and luminosity of one layer to another to make a flawless composite well let's hope it works so let's turn it on first and when we turn it on 
absolutely nothing happens. And that's because we haven't mapped it to a different layer yet. So go into select the layer here at the top and let's just choose layer one. And once I do that, it's gonna analyze it and bam. That's one of those moments where people like me who have been using Photoshop for 20 something years go like, what the f I just can't even believe that we're able to do that like this. And look, I can crank up the strength of this to make it a little bit more intense. I can also increase the saturation a bit on this guy because the background is pretty neon and saturated and then maybe bring down the brightness just a little bit there and really get him blended in with that background nicely and then I'm just gonna output this to a new layer and hit OK and once I do that there is our new composite which looks way more realistic you got the background blurred out, foreground in focus. This guy has been completely transformed in terms of the tone and shade and also a little bit of the coloration to match that background. And if you don't believe me, let's just take a look at where we started. So I'll turn the background off and then here this guy off. So here's how we started at the very beginning. We added a little bit of depth to the background. And then on top of that, we added that. So there you go. Another mind-blowing Adobe Neural Filter thing. I, again, not sure how they do it, don't really care quite frankly. It's making my life and millions of other lives easier all across the creative globe. So uh, awesome for you Adobe guys, whoever came up with this. This is really something else. And I, I, again, I don't know how to explain it. I just know that the buttons work and that's freaking fantastic. So. That's it for me. Uh, thank you very much for joining me for this tutorial. If you want to show me the work that you do using these techniques, you can follow me on Twitter at Justin Seeley. You can also follow me on Instagram at Justin S. Seeley. Don't forget to add the extra S. Tag me in something. Let me know what you want to see here. And until then, I got nothing else. Thanks a lot.